So we're down to the fourth video in this guide to formatting a book in Microsoft Word. Um, and I actually, all, I almost went through and switched these to four and five because I wanted to add section breaks. If you watch this whole series, you'll know that um, when I was at the point of adding, um, I'm trying to make this chapter look really good, but before heading one will look good and have the space that I set um, up here under paragraph spacings. I have line space options and I have a lot of space before the heading one. That's not going to show up unless there's a section break um, between the last break and this one. I haven't I haven't added in any section breaks yet. Um, so I was tempted to jump ahead and do the section breaks first. And I remembered the reason I don't do that is that when you're trying to add the headers and footers and page numbers, um, if you only have one Break. Like right now, there's there's not very many breaks in the document. There was there's only the one because I added it, but normally you wouldn't have any in a new document. So you could add the headers and footers and page numbers, um, and you could set them up once, and they would be the same for the whole document. But if you have already added section breaks in, then uh, it makes it a little difficult to change the spacing and the styles. I'll show you what I mean. So I'm going to go through this one and add headers, footers, and page numbers. Um, and we'll talk about why it's important to do it in this order. So this is still, like, I'm still playing with the styles, but at least they're set up. I could change these anytime. Um, the styles are set up, but I could change them and update the style when I want to. It's a little tricky because what I want to do now is add footers and page numbers. And so what I'm tempted to do, and what I usually do, I think, is add the section breaks first so that this would be on a new page and then I can really see you know, what's happening, what's going on. Um, but if you already have section breaks, if I click up here in the top portion of the page, it shows me the heading for section two. Um, and I'll be able to set this up and go to same as previous. I wanna change the heading from the top and the footer from the bottom. When you open up the headings, um, it it's a different panel. It shows you the heading and also the footer. So these are really connected. So I could have also, when I want to get out of this, I just click back on the main text. And I could also go down to the footer and click down here and it'll show me the footing area. So you can edit the footers and the headers anytime. Um, but I'll show you, for example, if I go up here and I change this spacing to three, which is more reasonable. Um, and that might be fine. In other sections of my document, that would still be five. So if I had a long document, if I had like 60 chapters um, and I did all of my page breaks first and then I tried to set up my headers and footers, I'd have to go back through and manually change all of these, which I've done countless times, um, which is why it's better to do it in this order um, that I've set up. So you add the headers and page numbers first and then you add the section breaks between chapters. <clears throat> so right now I'm going to mainly ignore these first paragraph or these first chapter pages. Um, they should look kind of like this. On first chapter pages, you won't really have any header. There shouldn't be any kind of a header. Sometimes you'll have a different footer. Um, often I've seen the footer will just be a page number centered, but it's fine if you don't have them. It looks kind of cleaner without it. And then on your regular pages, You'll have a footer um, and a you'll have a footer and a header, and they'll probably be alternating. So I'm going to get started. I'll just click up here. I've set these to header from the top and bottom is point three. Um, I'm going to type something in. So I'll say the name of the book. Most of the time, you'll have the name of the book, and then on the next one, you'll have um, the author name. And so here I'll put author name. But the problem is I want to, when I'm, sorry, I'm, there's a lot to process, so I'm kind of stumbling about which part to go first. Um, when I click up here and I'm in the headers, you see a different tab, which is the design tab. So this is what you're going to see um, when you click in the header or footers. And so what I want to click is different odd and even pages so that they will be alternating. And that way, I can set one to one thing and the other to the other thing. So this one can be name of the book. Oops. Name of book. And the next one can be author name. 
if I didn't do that, um, whatever I set for one would automatically be sa the same for the other one. And I'm actually going to go to view, and I'll look at multiple pages, because when you're doing the headers and the footers and you're considering alternating pages, it's pretty important to keep track of everything. So um, here I can see what they look like. I can see that my gutter is bigger here, so that's the inside of the book, and I don't want my header on the inside of the book. So I could either go and center these, which is fine if you want to keep your headers and your footers centered. Um, that's one option. And it's also kind of easier because then you don't need to keep track of alternating pages. Um, or I'll align this to the outside of the page. So because the gutter is here, this is actually the outside of the page, so this will be the outside of the pages. Um, sometimes it's nice to have one of these be italics. I can change the styles of these later. I would actually want to right-click this, go to Styles, and create a style, and say Headings. So that way, if these are both headings, oops, and if I did something like change the font. Like I said before, uppercase doesn't really work with styles, so I could, now that I've set this, I could go back to, up to headings and right click and update the headings to match the selection, um, but that doesn't work with alignment, and it also doesn't work with uppercase. So I'd have to go and uppercase this again, um, and then I'd have to align it again. But then once I've set these up, once I've set these up, they will be the same for the whole book. So I could scroll through anywhere um, and they would look the same, which is kind of what you want. Um, you'll also see if you click up here in the headings, there's this link to previous. That's almost always you want this to be checked. Um, if you uncheck it, it would delete this header and footer and connect it all. The, the chances that you would want to, or the, the times when you would want to uncheck it is when, for example, um, if you were doing your page numbers and you didn't want all the page numbers to be exactly the same. Often in a nonfiction book, the beginning page numbers um, are different. They use Roman numerals, and you don't start uh, page one until like the first chapter. So if you were doing it that way, then you would have a different section, and you wouldn't link the page numbers or the headers to the previous, because you wouldn't want the, the Roman numerals. You'd want to go into the next section, and it wouldn't link, and then you'd have um, new numbering, basically. But something else to point out, now that I've set these up, I've set up these headings, it's also showing on this first page of the chapter, which is what I don't want. And so I'm gonna go to different first page. If I have different first page clicked, what that means is after I've done a section break, which is actually what we're gonna do in the next chapter or the next video, um, after I've added a section break, this is the first page of a new section. This is section two. So if I have this clicked, then I can delete the headers and the footers. Um, I want to be a little careful. Sometimes, like, for example, if this had something written and this was linked to the previous, um, if I change this and I didn't have everything set up right, I might be changing everything in the book. So you want to be a little careful of how things are linked together. But if you have done a section break and this is the first page of a new section, and you've checked different first page. Again, normally you wouldn't see that. You'd be here. Um, and even if you click on this design tab, which is a new tab in 2016, you wouldn't see the tab you're actually looking for, which is a bit confusing. Um, but when you want to edit the headers of the footers, you just click in this space up here, and it will show you this design tab, which gives you these options. So. I'm actually just going to delete this. I check the different first page. Because I have a section break here, I can delete everything in the footer and the header um, and have a really nice first page of the first chapter, which is really clean. And then for the other pages, you'll have alternating headers and footers. Um, and then, like in the next video I'll show you, we'll have to go through and we'll have to make section breaks um, in all of this to finish setting everything up the right way, but the reason I didn't want to do that first is because you have to set your 
spacing at least. Um, because if I do all the section breaks first and I haven't set my spacing to how I want it, if you want to go back through and change your spacing, you need to manually do it for every section, which can be a pain. And if you miss something, then um, you know that those that section will look off. So you do want to set it up this way. At least you want to get your headers and footers spacing set up right. Um, I'm also going to go through and add page numbers. So when I want to add page numbers, I'll go to Insert. And actually, um, if you're already in this, if you're already in the headers of the footers area, you should see page numbers already. But if you don't, you can go to Insert and Page Number. And then you can put it at the top of the page, the bottom of the page. I usually, I'll put my cursor where I want it first, and then I'll just go to current position, and I'll go to plain number. Um, you could add something a little bit fancy if you want. I'm just going to put it there. And then I'm going to right align it. And then I can just copy. I can highlight, and I can copy this whole field and paste it over there. Um, and it will automatically have the next page. So I'll also have to align this to the side I want it on. The spacing got a little weird. Um, so I have to, there's a space below it. So I have to delete the space below it. Maybe delete a space above it until everything is matching up like it should. Um, I might want to add a little bit more space between these things. You can kind of see how it looks. So that's one way. Um, Generally, I usually align my page numbers and my headings like this to the edge of the pages. Something else you can do, though, is go up in the heading and add a bar, a vertical bar. I think that looks pretty nice most of the time. Um, if I go up here to headings, I would change the fonts. And then I would just have to do that on the reverse on the other side. These are already set up. Like in my formats, I've already done all this stuff. So if you get my free book formatting templates, um, you'll be able to just pick a template that has the style that you want and just use that template. It's a lot faster. So you want to make sure you have the right amount of spaces so that it looks the same on both sides. Um, so that's one thing you could do. Or you could use it down here at the bottom. Or you could just. Um, center things. So you'd want to save that as a style. You could save it as, if I knew that my footing is going to be the same as my headers, I could just use it my heading style, and that would be fine. Uh, but, but basically now, this is going to look the same everywhere. Like I said before, it shouldn't be showing up here, but it is because we haven't done our section breaks yet. So in the next video, I'll do section breaks between all of the chapters, and that's when we can start to show the different first page and get rid of those. Um, but for now, the, the main thing when you're starting to set this up is I'd want to make sure that my heading from the top and my footer from the top is how I want it, because that's what's going to be harder to change after we've done section breaks. Um, so you do want to take a look and make sure things look good. Actually, this is probably too much space, um, too much, not enough space between these. So I could fix that, I think, by um, just hitting return. Oops, didn't work. So you want to just make sure that this is even. Um, and then you want to scroll through and make sure that it's the same everywhere. And all I did was I didn't change, actually, the spacing here. I only hit return after and added an extra space up here in the header. Um, but that worked. And that might even be too much spacing. Um, but you want it, I mean, you want it enough. So that, that's, I'd probably do it, let's see. I mean, in a perfect world, that looks a little bit better. I think that would work for me. Um, this actually looks like a lot too much line spacing in here. I set it to point 0.3, which is, I think, what I usually use. Um, maybe it's the font. It just seems like there's too much spacing in this particular document. I would probably try spacing that to 1.2. 
and then I'd have to go up here to paragraph and update to match selection and then I'd have to remember to go here to my first paragraph which is a different style and make sure I change that to match. Oh, so they were already not matching so that one's point two already and now this one is point two also. So 1.2 is the line spacing I'm using. That's a pretty good line spacing. It can be tighter. It really depends on um, your genre and how big the book is. You really want your book to be about three or 400 pages. I think it's fine if it's less, um, but I think it should be at least 100 pages. So if you're writing a shorter book, I try to add more spacing and bigger margins um, to get it to a one or 150 pages. Otherwise, you know, if it's 250 to 350 pages, I think that's a good length for most books, unless you're writing something like sci-fi fantasy where people expect long books. And in some cases, you know, a 400 book page, a 400 page book will sell better than something with less pages. So um, an easy trick on CreateSpace, for example, when you upload a print book to CreateSpace, they will often show on the Kindle version the exact pages based on the print copy as opposed to if they just do the ebook they'll estimate it and it's usually a lot less um, so for example my book might show is you know 200 pages but once i open once i upload my print book uh, it shows based on the actual book it's like 400 pages and then i sell more books because there's a higher perceived value because people see higher page numbers um, anyway so that's basically all there is to footers and headers. You want to pick a style that um, that you like. It looks like something got a little bit screwed up here, so I lost my page numbers on the other side. I might have deleted that on accident. So I'd have to go through and set it all up again. And add in the right number of spacing. But then these are basically just fields. Um, so that page number should be the same all the way through the book until the very end. It'll still show up just how you want it. <laughs> it didn't actually. Um, that's funny. This one is showing as 31 pages. So I'd have to figure out exactly where that went wrong by scrolling through. It looks like this is just not updating. So let me delete that and I'll try just copying only this field there. And that one worked. So that's 53, 54. The space got a little bit off. Anyway, once you set these up the right way, this is also something you can play with later. Um, once you change these or you change the styles, it's going to work through the whole book. Um, what isn't going to work through the whole book is once you start adding your section breaks, these spacings, um, they'll be unique for every section. So if you want to change these spaces later, that's kind of a pain in the ass and you'd have to go through every section. But this is the end of this video. The next video will actually talk about breaking those section breaks, which is really important. I usually just do that like in the beginning, but um, there are reasons for doing it here after you've set all the other stuff up. So I'm going to cross this one out and the next video will go on to the next part.